Introverts have read it. What is the furthest you've ever gone to avoid human interaction? Was 5 minutes late to school, so I decided to skip school altogether that day to avoid the awkward class entry. College. Had to attend an out of town conference with my classmates as part of the requirements for a course. My professor had booked a block of rooms at the hotel where the conference was held and people were going to put 3 to 4 guys or girls to a room and split the cost. My classmates had a bunch of socializing and bar hopping planned, which sounds like my idea of a living hell. Also, all of them coupled together in groups. I honestly would have rather walked barefoot across a mile of Legos than to be held hostage in a car for 4 hours with people I barely know. A few people asked if I wanted to carpool with them and what room I was in, and I said oh, thank you so much. I'm actually staying with a friend in town though, and I'm stoked to see her. I'm going to have to take my own car so I can drive to the conference. I'll catch you guys there. So I wouldn't come off as a weirdo. But I actually reserved a room at another hotel way across town, attended the bare minimum of the conference, and enjoyed as many coffee shops, art museums, downtown shopping trips, and nature trails as I could. Back when I had roommates I didn't know very well. I'd spend all day in my room without meals to avoid awkward pleasantries. Then I'd get really hungry, but the prospect of explaining why I'd spent all day in my room kept me inside. Then they'd text me and ask if I was okay, and I'd say yep, just keeping busy with some projects. And they'd ask if I'd eaten anything since they hadn't seen me, and I'd say yep, trust me, I'd never go without food. Then I'd wake up at midnight and steal my own food from the fridge. In high school I didn't have a car, so I walked home. I used to just fast walk to try to beat the crowd of people, but I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. So I would stay in the computer lab sometimes and ask my dad to pick me up a few hours later. So once the bell rang to go home, I would just stay in class since I had computers last. The teacher would forget I was in there slash not even notice me and then turn the lights off, lock the door, then leave. Honestly I didn't mind at all. I got to play video games by myself and one time about an hour and a half later the janitor came in and I guess I scared him. He turned the lights on and literally screamed when he saw me. Rather than associate with my naughty aunt, when I lived with her, I told her I was going out for a while, moved my car up the street, and sat in it watching Netflix on my phone for a couple hours. I went to an empty room and stood in the dark for 45 minutes to avoid a team bonding event. In 7th grade I would hide in the science lab during lunch and recess time and feed and play with the school pets. I would ask to use the bathroom around 10 minutes into lunch and then come back in the last 2 minutes. They probably thought I had some real bad bowel issues. They were 2 birds, a bunny, and 2 guinea pigs. I would feed them carrots and talk to them. Nobody knew that I was there for half of the year. When one of my teachers finally walked in on me, I thought I was busted. Luckily she was one of the nicer ones and made it my official job to play with and feed the animals. When I was 12, a man in a suit I didn't know knocked on the door. I could see him through the front room window, so I hid behind the chair, looked up to see if he had gone, made eye contact, stayed where I was. Wasn't the last time it happened. I went on a three week camping trip to avoid two family reunions. I stopped talking for an entire year of school. 5th grade, to be precise. 6th grade, use a fatter fox. Hey what's up guys? Friends, dude what the fuck? You can talk. I actually had this happen to me a few times. I wasn't the most talkative in some classes, so when I spoke it sometimes caused the entire class to turn towards me in shock. My roommate threw a party at my house and I hid from everyone. There's only one front door and everyone would see me if I left and would want to talk to me. I avoided eating that whole night because I didn't want to walk by the party to get food. My car was trapped between other cars. I ended up jumping out of a second story window and walking 3 miles to a 7-eleven. I'm not as shy and introverted as I used to be but now I have moods where I do not even want to see a single person until the mood has passed. When I was living in dorms in college, I would stand in my closet or bathroom for hours, just so I wouldn't have to see the people talking in my room. I ended up hearing a lot of conversations I shouldn't have heard, because nobody ever knew I was there lol. 
I once spent a weekend in a hotel because I just wanted to be alone and chill, reading books and watching TV. The people I lived with at the time couldn't spend more than an hour on their own with some sort of social interaction. The roomie I have now is like-minded and we can go days without talking slash seeing each other and it's great. I was getting a taxi back home and must mumbled or garbled my destination because it was quite clear he was going to a completely different place. Like, literally as soon as he turned right out of the parking lot instead of left. I literally let the guy drive for 15 minutes in the wrong direction, eventually just blurting out anywhere here will do, and giving him a tenner, and then just walking aimlessly, until I found a public transport I recognized and jumped on that. A 10 minimum cab drive turned into a nearly 2 hour journey home. For those curious, and who live in Manchester, UK, I wanted to get a cab from Ashton to a Penshaw, and ended up going to Oldham, getting a tram to the city centre, and getting a train from there back home. Lived in a loft downtown on the third floor. The amount of times I use the stairs in effort to not being trapped on an elevator with a stranger is too many to count. One time there was a family moving in. I walked all the way around the building to the opposite side's entrance to get into the building. Then they were using the elevators, so I took the stairs, then they were on my floor moving shit in. I didn't want it to look like I was trying this hard to avoid them, so I said, whoops, wrong floor and walked up two extra floors and waited 10 minutes before going back down to see if they were gone. What should've taken me 5 minutes took me close to 30 to get in my apartment. That's when I realized I might have a problem. I never answer the door unless I'm expecting someone. Just today actually, my neighbor was knocking on my door this morning and I didn't answer. When it was time to head to work I realized I didn't have my keys. I think my neighbor found them and was trying to return them. Edit, added a little more to the above and included an update below. Update, sure enough, I left my keys in the door last night and my neighbor was nice enough to try to return them. But since I never answered my door, he took them to the front office. Let this be a lesson to my fellow introverts. Don't leave your keys in your door. I routinely cross streets or turn down streets that are in the wrong direction of where I'm going to avoid awkward interactions with vehicles as a pedestrian. Please don't stop and give me that it's okay to go. Wave when there's still traffic barreling down the opposite side of the street and you're the only vehicle trying to be courteous. I appreciate what you're trying to do, but it would be easier for everyone if you just kept driving. Before I got my own apartment, I was sharing one with two other people. I usually spend Saturday nights away from home, but one time I happened to stay home for the night. One of my roommates was gone, and the other didn't realize that I was at home. So he invited his girlfriend over. I was woken up by the sound of loud sex in the room right next to mine. As I was lying there, unable to sleep, I realized something horrifying. My period has started. I couldn't leave my room without them noticing that I was there and that I could hear them. I didn't want them to feel awkward. I spent the whole night lying in a pool of my own period blood, pretending I wasn't there. In order to avoid a mandatory Christmas social for work, I legitimately took myself to the ER just to get the registration wristband for proof that I actually went to the hospital and then left. Wasn't sick or anything and I didn't even see a doctor. I just needed a hospital wristband to prove that I had a reason not to go to the work mixer so I wouldn't get fired. I hated my coworkers. Edit, the Christmas party was mandatory because I was working at a preschool and the company wanted to up their reputation as a family oriented organization to the rich ass parents who were throwing insane amounts of money at the company to babysit their kids. So they had a preschool Christmas concert, followed by an after party for the parents to get to know the faculty, as if we didn't see them every fucking day at drop off slash pick up. The party was also meant to be a way for us coworkers to get to know each other better, as if we hadn't worked together mf, 7am to 6pm every fucking week, fuck that. Hid under a bed, while a real estate agent showed a couple around my flat. Couldn't be bothered to go out, but can't stand small talk, so decided to lay low. I had a cup of tea, cushions, a Nokia with snake on it. I was quite happy under there. They were 25 minutes late. I guess I was under the bed for just over an hour. I feared a sneeze. I was in my early 20s. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe to be entered into our iMac giveaway.